Everyone has a story. I want to hear yours next. I know it's been a while since you last seen me. This is your host, Chris Baker of the podcast, Tell Me Your Story. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Today's guest is Caleb White, and he's here to tell his story. And we're going to do like how we always do. We're just going to jump into it and, you know, just ask the basic question. Start from the, the very beginning. Like, you know, where'd you grow up as a kid? Where did it all start? How many, like, uh, brothers, sisters you had? You know, just the basic stuff. Go ahead. Uh, okay. Well, I grew up here actually in Sandusky, Ohio. Uh, my family's from my dad's side and everything from, from Kentucky and everything. I got an older brother. Uh, and then I got, I'm the youngest. So there's three of us. And then my, my older brother, Danny, and then my, 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 uh, sister, Ashley. And, uh, she, she's four years older than me. And then my brother's nine years. So we've got a little bit of a gap, but you know, but, um, you know, that's just how, how it is and everything. But, uh, yeah, I just grew up through here. And I mainly was Southern, though, because we were always down in Kentucky <laughs> most of the time. I mean, we were there a lot. So I liked it there and everything. But once you started getting, you know, back with school and everything and everything, it was kind of hard to go down there as, as much and everything, too. But it, it's a good – it's – visiting all the family and stuff like that down there and stuff too and everything. it's 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 nice and the atmosphere and the, the well there it's all it's a lot of beautiful land down there you know like whatever i think about like when you describe the childhood i always think to myself like like anymore when i, when I find myself talking about it it feels like like a, like a hallmark classic anymore compared to like kids nowadays where you, you got phones constantly glued to your your faces and right. Yeah. You know, back in our childhood, it was like you were, you were outside until the streetlights came on. Our and... adventure, yeah, <laughs> our adventure was like going in the woods and yeah. carving things into a tree or, or throwing a rock at a squirrel or something. <laughs> I mean, I don't know, <laughs> you know, doing things like that. Like, I'm mainly I used to do is just try to build. I'd gather all the sticks I could and everything and make little tree houses with tree forts. <laughs> Yeah, those are like the <laughs> best do. times, too. And here in Sandusky, man, we used to have, I don't know if you got the chance to ever go to trails. You used to, it was like, like a bike trail. It was over there uh, by Lions Park. But you used to about to go yeah. back there where the bank was. I don't, I don't, I, yeah, I think the bank's still there. It's it, the, the overpass is over there now. It's where all the, the truck place is at, Ohio Truck Sales. But mm -hmm. there used to be a woods back there. You used to be able to go on the trails. <laughs> And it used to have like bike ramps and everything. You used to go downhill with your bike there. There was multiple courses back there, and it was it was just awesome. It's too good to be true, you know. A place that you could just go and just hang out. You talk yeah. about you know going into the trees and the adventures. Let me warn you, the person that's a little you know watching, listening right now, we were told many times not to go to the back there by ourselves. Don't worry, <laughs> my mom told me many times. <laughs> But we still did it. We still, you know, went out and explored, and that was just all part of being a kid. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, we just we wanted to live that, you know, adventure, you know, like go <laughs> Indian Jones style and everything, and explore and find the the coolest looking rock. And then at the time, we had a classic game called I think it was called Manhunt. Used to have like a group of like a couple people. We would get out there and just. Uh, you ever played Manhunt? Mm -hmm. this game was kind of like freeze tag tag you know just a, all like put together and there you had have like two like two or three people in a group or four depending on how many people you had with you and it was like you had to go hide and if that person were to find you they would tag you you get you know like freeze tag you get froze mm -hmm. and then it was up to one of your teammates to come save you so if one of your teammates were able to mm -hmm. untag you you would be unfroze so you might have okay. been called, might be called differently. Okay. Yeah, I didn't know the name. Yeah, I've played that before. I played that way back in, uh, not, I went to Margaret, you know, at Bogart. We, we play that a lot. <laughs> Man, huh? <laughs> All right, so recovering your childhood was kind of 
you know, we're getting a little off base here. <laughs> yeah. We'll talk about your your story. Uh, so you have you, you know you talked about your parents. Uh, what year was this actually? Well, actually, be, everything was going good and everything and stuff. But at the same time, you know, I never seen life in a different view. I guess it never would until you know. But um, it was 2010, or right right after I graduated and stuff like that. Right right there, um, my dad had this motorcycle accident, and you know they, they said that you know he wasn't going to be able to walk or talk or do anything because he's where he split his head open and everything. But the Lord, you see what how the Lord works, and and he's out be able to you know half he's half retired and he's able to still go to work you know like on his times and everything and he's, he's doing good you know he still might have a little moments in here and there but it nothing like anything compared to what he used to be and and what it used to be and well, yeah let's kind of touch on that for a minute like just that moment you hear about your dad you know having an accident and not just an accident but a, like a brain you know the head injury and a lot of times that's a hit or miss and your dad was able to, I mean, like, cause God was working in like how he does and he was able to help your dad in that situation. But a lot of times people end up brain dead in that situation. And I'm sorry for the people that are watching right now that have had that happen to you or, or you know, someone close to you, you lost somebody. And, you know, I'm sorry to hear that, but at this time, it's amazing to hear that his dad was able to survive it. And how, I mean, how was Can you kind of ex explain a little bit more how it was the, the first couple of months going into that? Yeah. Um, for most of the part, it was learning how to do it just about everything all over again. Like each day was like a year gain probably. And so he, I kind of, in a sense, I was watching my dad grow up <laughs> and it was, I don't know how to explain it to you. It was different because I wanted, I looked up to him. I still do everything, but it's like, you go to him for answers, you know, or asking, and then he's asking you things. It's, I don't know. It's a little different. So like in a complete, so you're, you're okay. You're 18 at the time. You just got out of high school and you're, you're becoming a man yourself pretty much. And now you're you're looking to get that uh, that guidance still from your dad, but now the re it's the roles are reversed. You're saying because your dad, with everything going on, he's relearning how to walk, talk, you know, just all the basic stuff. And you you're looking for answers, you know, how do I handle this situation? Or you're getting involved in love lives, and you're trying to figure out like how can I, what do I do here, dad? And He's coming to you for answers, and it's like, whoa, this is, <laughs> you're right thinking yourself, well, what do I do, man? This is... Yeah, it kind of put me into, like, a different kind of mental state at that time, because it was just, it was it was hard to, I don't know how to explain it, but just, it was just hard, and that's, in my mentality, you know, to, I, you know, I just never would, you know, you just never, you don't know, you don't know from the next day to the time. When I'm, but what I've learned through life and stuff is always treat others and everybody, you know, the greatest, because you don't, we don't know when our last days are going to be. That's up to, that's up to the father. But I do know that, you know, you never know what could be the last time. So that's why it's not good to have an argument or do whatever, because I was actually kind of arguing with my mom when she went to her thing, like when that happened and all that stuff happened. And, uh, it was kind of hard for me because, I mean, I know she can hear me now and stuff like that. And it still does. And everything, when I talk to her, she'll open her eyes and look at me and stuff, but she can't speak yet. But I, you know, I have faith one day she's going to get up and tell her testimony too. And, and nothing's impossible when it comes to the Lord. If you believe and have faith in your heart and everything. So that's when I'm doing it. It just might not be in the right time. Cause it's not like you could snap your finger and do it. You know, it's got, it works on his time, but with our surrendering through, you know, learning these things. And I just know that he's been merciful enough to show me, you know, things through life because I was getting taken things for granted 
I have to be honest, I was. I'm not. <laughs> yeah, you know, you know, and I, but it's like once you had that taken away from you, slipped under you for a little bit, it kind of like you appreciate things a lot more. Yeah, you, like what you're basically saying is you see the world differently from a different point of view. You, you learn how to appreciate everything you have more of a like like i've said before in the past uh, just the spirit of gratitude just thankful for you know what a lot of people would not really talk about on a daily basis i mean just the basic small stuff that we take for granted that is actually huge stuff like the other day for instance like a perfect example is that storm we got hit with that you know it it was raining hard the other day but here we was sleeping under a roof and, you know, had a roof over our heads, a nice bed to sleep in, a nice, not a drop of rain hit us. You know, that's something to be very grateful and thankful for, you know, even though it's the same word. But <laughs> right. But it's 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 good to have these things. These, these things are, are are more of luxurious, like things to have, you know, and, and it's and it's an honor, and, you know, and a privilege to have these things. And it's and it's good to be, be thankful to the Lord that, you know we can have that, you know, cause anything can change in moment, twinkling an eye or a moment, you know, from, and it's, so it's good to have and be around the people you can, because you, you know, you never know what could take place in the next minute. And that minute could last a long time. <laughs> Trust me. Preach, you know, preach. So, you know, it's just something that I just know that, you know, I just, it's, it's good to, cherish one another and you know be kind and also we're not we're not here on this earth i realize that you are not we're we're here to, to finish it we don't have to, we might not have to win it but we can we have to finish it and we just got to help each other on the long way like seeing like a runner you see and they're running the track and he, let's just say he breaks his ankle i'm one type of guy i'm going to walk back and i'm going to pick him up and put on his arm around my shoulder i'm going to walk and we're going to finish it together that's what Jesus would do. Carry him to finish the race. Now, since we're kind of touching into the subject, have you always been spiritual, or you know, always have that connection to God, or was it before um, after the accident that made you more closer to God? It was more. It was more. It was more I, well, honestly, I got really close. Like at first, I was kind of having doing like a Jonah, <laughs> like a rebellion thing. And whatnot, and you know, as stubborn as I am, and everything, you know, I'd, you know, I just learn things differently, and, you know, that way. But the Lord's still merciful and protects and everything, you know, and He's still there. I've learned through these these tribulations, these these trials, that who is with me in the fire, like like me, Shakri, Shemendigo, you know, I mean, I know that He's there. And it's not like, Lord, if you're hearing me, it's like I know. He's present because it, uh, the presence and everything is it, I can, you can feel it. And it, and it says in there, the greater is he who is in me than he who is in the world. So, and, I mean, oh, that's really like the best feeling too. It's just when you truly know that he's there. A lot of us, I mean, like you yeah. said, when you're in the moment and you're going through it and you're dealing with stuff and especially when it's, when it hits you harder, like, you know, with your dad and everything. And in that moment, a lot of times people don't know what to do. And they're like, why God, you know, where, where were you then? Why weren't you there? And when you start, you start questioning, but in, mm -hmm. the truth is that God was there. He, he is present. You know, he's with your dad as we speak. And, and he's the one that's healing your dad from head to toe. Even your mom, he want her head mm -hmm. to toe. Talking mm -hmm. you know, right now in this moment, as we're, you know, what's this say? When two or three to come together, <laughs> he's in the he's present. <laughs> present. Yep. And, and anybody and right that's now. That's great about it. Yeah. I'm just thinking like right now somebody, I kind of feel it like as we're talking, somebody's dealing with it where they, they're feeling defeated. You need, They're feeling like, you know, the same way, you know, where are you, God? Why aren't you with me? And I can tell you right now, he's he is with you. Yeah, he's, for he's sure. there right now. 
He's president. I'm just he doesn't have to scream. If anything, he just it's just a it's just a gentle murmur saying, "I'm here with you, son. Yeah. I'm here." Like I mean, you get I get those that happen, and and it is it makes I'm mean, literally cry and stuff like that because it's it's in a good way though. But I mean, it's just you know, it, especially when you're battling stuff or doing whatever, and it's like you finally just kind of like stop and think, and and instead of just like making a choice or do whatever you ask him or tell him like whatever. And sometimes he'll just tell you, you know, you know, well done, you know, I'm proud of you. I love you. You know, I mean, you, you hear, I hear it sometimes it tells me like in a walkie talkie and I'm like, like he talks literally. And it's after when I died, like, cause I've died a couple of times out of stupidity, you know, and everything. And, and I've had my fair share of seeing certain things, but I, I don't want to share too much of that, but, um, in the good sense of it, though, it's the it's the fact and the feeling of knowing that he's there. He's always been the same as he has been back at the beginning. He's slow to anger. People don't understand that, but he's merciful because he loves us. He if that's why he wants everybody if he can saved. I mean that he loves all of his children, but you know, like some choose to. It's more of a choice that we we're given. That's why he gives it to us. We choose not to to acknowledge or or want to love his, you know, the true feeling and compassion of, of his son. You know what he's done on the cross and everything for us. Even Pretty Jesus good. knew. Yeah. If you think about it, he he never he never spoke the the problem. He always spoke the solution. He was always one step ahead. That's how faith worked. Amen. Like when the father, like, <laughs> yeah, like when the father comes in, he's like, my daughter's dead. And he said, no, she's home. She's only sleeping. And then he walked in there and he had to get everybody that was full of doubt out. So when he went in there, he said, Talitha Kumi, which means damsel, get up and arise. And then like what a lot of people miss in the messages, though, is our mindsets. We have to control yes. that. We have to control what's going on in here. That's a battlefield. Because like you said, like in that moment, the guy was thinking that his, his daughter was dead. But Jesus was able to preach to him and tell him, no, 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 she's sleeping. Reversing that thought in his head so that when he went back, he had hope. <laughs> and that's what he's for. I mean, he, he's he's literally the door. He said, only through me shall, shall you seek the Father in the kingdom of heaven. But it's not just the fact of the, being the door, but it, it's the fact of the hope and upbringing. Where does it, you know, there's always going to be a little, little bit of a light out of the darkness that you see around everything. I mean, th there's nothing that you can't, you know, there isn't, there is no sting. Let's put it that way, because you don't even know you're dead. I'm not kidding you. That's the creepy part about it. Now, when you come back to life, I will tell you, <laughs> it hurts. <laughs> But no, um, <laughs> yeah, but in a good way, you know, but, you know, it's just your senses come, you know, everything back in the, what it, you know, normally is, but it, I've, I've learned a lot and I'm still learning and I'm always going to continue to learn. That's one big thing also is I will never know everything and I won't, nobody will. I mean, there, and there's just so much out there, even on the, on the other side that it's hard to to explain and tell you and, and all the things it would take a long time <laughs> and i can't even explain it in even in words i guess you could say but i do know one thing that everything is alive and even for the lord i mean everything and, and i i understand now when they say like everything that, that has his creation sings to you know glory and everything to him and i believe it and i know that too i really do and it's a good thing it's a good feeling and everything i mean it's just good to know that he is the one that's watching out of the whole thing. He's watching over all of his children and everything. No matter what we go through. Because if you think about it, all the disciples and everything, they all went through things. They didn't, they weren't taken out of things. They went through the things. Amen. 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 All right. Before we have church session over here. Sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> yeah. We'll go back to, to, so, okay. Yeah, you had just graduated high school. Uh, what mm -hmm. was the, what was what was after that? Did you go to college? What took place? Yeah, I did a little bit. 
Yeah, I did a little bit of um, I was like the BGC finals for a little bit. I was trying to, I was going for that. It's called VCT, it's like visual communication tech. Because I did it in the hobby at visual communication design, it was kind of like the graphic arts photography type stuff. I did that for a little while and everything, but I was working at the job too and doing that. And it, it kind of was overwhelming at times and everything. So I ended up giving up doing schooling and just going going to work. And I never went back and picked up any kind of schooling in that form. You know, after that, I just kept working. But at the same time, it was my mind still was kind of like you know, like after graduating and stuff, like, you know, once it started pursuing all that, it was just, it was that really what I wanted to grow in my profession, you know, but, and then after my dad's situation and then, you know, all that stuff, it's like, then I didn't, you know, I didn't know what I wanted to do or what's going on at that time, but. Yeah, you didn't really have the focus. You're, you know, you're thinking yeah. about him all the time and you're, at the same time, it was kind of trying to balance your life plus you know what's going on there you're, you're probably taking care of your dad as well so it was a lot, well, lot, was, of, yeah, lot going it was on. my sister and my mom yeah and then and then right after that then you know then my mom's situation you know that, that took place and when she when that, all that took place and she she's in a vegetative state right now but it's the fact that i don't care what the doctors say that what if it says there it's what the great physician and people's prayers are powerful. If I'm serious, they do work whether they know or not. Oh, yeah. And, and it's, you know, and I, like I said, there when she's going to, and with my faith and everything, I know she's going to, and when she does, that's one time you start rejoicing and looking up for them. <laughs> I think that would be amazing. And that's the best part is, Dang, we're getting back into it again. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. But anyway, so, so we're, um, I was going to say the best part of that is just being able to plant that seed, that seed of hope of just knowing that. I mean, just showing your faith really, too, is just knowing that everything's going to be all right, that you, you see the outcome. You know that who's in charge, who's, you know, who's taking care of them. And that's what makes you feel so much better in the peace of state of mind. Just, yeah, it just that relax. Like, you know, everything's going to be okay. So, back to it. So, so you didn't finish college and you went into the work field. You go yeah, I, I did that and I just, you know, I was going through different jobs and stuff like that. But it, it, it got to the point where it was a struggle. Um, I would, it was just going through jobs. Like it would be a pair of underwear. I mean, like it, because it was just the mentality and everything of, I don't know, like with both of the situations happened, I still didn't have time to really heal from both of those incidents situations. And then I didn't have, you know, like I, in my mind, it was just, I wasn't running from it, but I was like avoiding it too, you know, like in a sense. But then when I like had it to where it, it comes out no matter what, sometimes like I'll just be in the middle. I would go sometimes in the middle of walking or going to Walmart or go do my job or whatever and just bust out and start crying. Cause yeah, you're, you're just overwhelmed with everything that's going on. You're, you're trying to take care of your, I mean, it's all, like a lot of people that like think about it for a moment is you're, you're a young man. You're taking care of your parents. Plus you said what your sister well, the sister was helping. She okay. she was helping. That's, that's what also kept everything, you know, really good. And I was really, really happy and appreciated that, that you know, because she stepped up and, and helped and everything, too, because it, it, I don't know. It's just hard. It, it was difficult at times. So you got all that going on. Plus, you're trying to balance out with work and try to make an income and some money for yourself. Plus, on top of that, like I said, you're a young man, and you're trying to figure out what you want to do in life and where you want to head in life. But at the same time, you got these responsibilities and stuff to take care of. So I can understand why you were crying at that bus stop because you're just overwhelmed. You got all this stuff, you know, piled up on top of you. Yeah, it, it's just, and you know, and. It, it's it's almost I, to be honest it's like it's almost at those point in times which i've learned that i talk to 
I have a relationship with Jesus, you know, and everything more than anything. So I talk to him like I'm talking to you or anything, you know, and my mind and everything. And, but at that time and everything, it's, that's the biggest moments like where it's like, you want to reach out to him, but it, I haven't started to want to understand and learn. It's like, I don't want to just talk to him and, and reach out to him at that time. I want to do that every day, you know, like growing in that, but you know, you, you hit those weak, weak spots in your life and stuff and you do, and, and it, you think about it and it's like, and I'm an overthinker. So like you got that tree branch thing out where you're thinking this, and this, you know, it's like, and you know, and then by the time you realize it, you look at the clock and you're like, Oh, I didn't even sleep. Oh, and I'm, I'm up and ready to go to work again. <laughs> <laughs> I've had those a few nights before too, but, um, you know, it, it's just through that part of the situation, but I've, and then when I've gotten married, I'll tell you what, the great thing about looking, I had another aspect of looking at different things was when I had my daughter. And the feeling I that, to be honest with you, I cannot explain to you, it, but just the feeling it was beyond so much joy and care and happiness. I don't know how to explain it, but the feeling is just, it's, it, it's strong. And, and it's like, when I was looking at her holding, I was holding her in my arms and the Lord actually was telling me in my mind, he was, you know, he was telling, telling me, he was like, this is how I feel with you. Wow. And I was like, wow. <laughs> I was like, that makes sense. You know, like, even, like in that moment, I could just. Yeah, yeah, it was just hearing that. I would, I mean, I'd be choked up. I'd have tears in my eyes. Like, wow. oh, I was, I couldn't, I couldn't stop running for like a good two hours almost, literally. Like, I just, but it was more the joy, though, feeling everything and stuff. It wasn't like bad or anything. It was just, but it was also more of the feeling of understanding, too. Like, I, because I'm slow to comprehension. So it, you know, like it takes me a minute to, I'm not as fast as other people can get, you know, understand things. Yeah, but just take your time now. Yeah. And that right there was like one of the big thing for me right there. And just seeing her and, and just in my mind, you know, like all I want to do is protect her and all I want to do is make sure she's okay. Like literally, like I like anybody to be sharp out and everything, like I'd make sure to take everything out of the way. And you know, I kind of in that same aspect, that's how our father is tries to you know like you know but I mean, that's, yeah that's how he wants it to be for all of us is to understand that that's how he sees us uh, mm -hmm. his children and if we could get that clear image out of you know into our heads that god wants nothing but the best for us he wants us to have the whole world you know <laughs> life would be different and people it's that people would stop seeing it for I, oh, I can't preach to everybody. I can't say how, you know, because we all see God differently in our own eyes, Jesus differently in our own eyes. And, but it's the feeling of, and everything well, also, the spirit altogether as yeah. one. But the feeling, and just had that, that relationship, like you said, that connection, that bond, it's, you can't explain it. You'll be right. left at times speechless. you find yourself teary-eyed. <laughs> I'm happy. Like, I mean, you're watching this. <laughs> huh? What was I, it? I said, "Come to Christ, whoever is watching this." Yes. Oh, trust me. It, there's nothing, and it, and the good thing about that is, compared to like even that, usually like when it comes to like witchcraft and dark magic and stuff, usually there's usually a price you got to take. This one's nothing. He just wants you simply pull up a chair and sit and have fellowship with him. <laughs> and awesome that's good to, to you know to share that and know that you know and then just saying like you know jesus and everything and then you just look over and see other people and they smile and they give you a wave and it's like there's another brother and sister <laughs> you know <laughs> well, all of us are brother and sister if we look at it it's just a matter of you know getting them and understanding you know just like how jesus did with the woman you know if you i'll give you water that you'll never thirst again <laughs> there's no more that was what you said and then when you so, hear when you hear scripture like that like do you you find yourself just thinking like in that moment 
what it would have been like just being there and just seeing to witness that. that that's all I think about. Like when I'm there, I just feel like I'm standing there, like I'm over shoulder, like watching, you know, like seeing it happen and everything. It does. And that's what it feels like. That's why I feel like it's like alive, you know, like it's, it does. It, it's, you're like right there. Like, wow. It reminded me of that. There was a cartoon that my, my daughter was like to watch. It was called Superbook. And it was kind of like that. Yeah, I've heard Like that. they would go back. And, yeah. Yeah, it's really good. But um, yeah, she got into that. But, you know, it was just, it's also it was just a good aspect of, of seeing and now my daughter's going to be six in December so it's like you know time flies and it really does they grow up fast because you know I just here we are we're right in, in this time era and stuff you know and she, she just started school and everything and uh, and Margaret yeah, and, you know, I went to Margaret and stuff, so she's doing that <laughs> slow down oh sorry about that <laughs> No, no, it's cool. I'm just saying, slow down. Like you're saying, slow down, time. She's growing up too fast. Oh yeah. Oh, trust me. Yeah. No, I mean, it's like you just want. Yeah, it's like they're in the that next stage of things or whatever, and you're like, oh man, like like it just happens faster than you think. <laughs> I was and just holding with my arms. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it's always a good feeling when they just give you a hug around here and everything, and everything. Just even the littlest things, you know, is is over amazing to them <laughs> and it's like you see that though you know like it reminds you of of being you know i remember that you know like reminder of being like young again like seeing it through them yeah that like, just like, that, that, you're just feeling it like i remember that i remember that feeling <laughs> all right yeah. as we, and, as we and, um begin to wrap this thing up yeah I just like to say thank you for coming on, you know, and telling your story, getting a little bit of your story, half of it. <laughs> yeah, um, I mean, but we're, we're, I, let's just put it this way where I'm at in life, I'm still growing and I will continue to grow. I know I'm still going to go, I still have my troubles and everything, just like you or anybody else will. But it's the fact of knowing who we are with, you know, each other, brother and sister, and who our father is, and knowing that. His his blood was enough, wow. and we just keep and we got to just keep knowing in faith, knowing that we're gonna have our times and moments, but knowing who's there with us, always, 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 always. But anyway, so, we know forsake you. <laughs> thank you, everybody, for watching. Thank you for listening. I'll see you next time. Peace.